All right, so this practice is going to take between 45 minutes and um, no more than an hour. So we're going to start in child today and we'll start in a closed off child, okay? So just come to the middle of your mat and then bring your knees together. You might want to take a foam or, or a block, okay? Wrap your arms around your body, yeah? And then just gently nestle your head down onto the block. If you don't need a block, that's fine. Just take a moment here to really drop into your practice. You can use a foam between your sit bones and your heels. You can use a foam underneath your head. Just taking this moment just to arrive on your mat today. Just showing gratitude and acknowledge the time that you've carved out of your day to be present. Let all the sounds around you begin to seem a little distant. Listening to each one, not labeling it as good or bad, but just saying hello to that sound and then letting it sort of flitter off <clears throat> into the distance. The only sound you hear is the gentle sound of your breath. And you drop into the physical body lying on the mat at this time, on this day. It's been quite a journey of a year. So even that, just let any thoughts or ideas of this year, of anything you've got to do today, just let it go. Letting them join the sounds and move off into the distance. Notice if you've brought in a certain emotion or attitude into your practice. And that too, just let it have its place. And then just let it move off. Feeling a deep relaxation through the shoulder blades and the shoulders becoming heavy. Just a few more moments as you allow yourself to settle in. Just moving into your inner world a little more. A place of limitless energy. an abundance of joy, and a brightly burning light. And then bringing your hands underneath your shoulders, just push them in just to sit up onto your knees, your shins. And then you'll come to butterfly pose to begin with. So just move the legs over to the side, okay. And then bring the soles of your feet together, but bring them a little further away from you. Okay, so you want to get into the hips and the inner thighs here. Now you've got to figure out how to make yourself comfortable, right? You might need something under each one of your knees. You might not. 
okay? There's no pushing and pulling with this, yeah? If your knees are supported, you might find that you want to bring sort of um, a block underneath your forehead, okay? We're going to round forward. So this is again opening inner thighs, lower back, yeah? So if that's not high enough, you can place another block or a book underneath. Okay, and then hold on to the soles of your feet. Take a big breath in and exhale. Just allow yourself to drape forward. The spine can round for this one. And you can place your head on the block or if you're aiming for it, you can move all the way down to the soles of the feet. And we're gonna hold this. So in yin, you hold the poses for between three and five minutes. So three minutes here. And just drop into the breath. Allow yourself just to settle down. And there are always three things in yin. You find your edge. No more than your edge. You get quiet and you allow time. Just feeling how the physical body and the mind and emotion are connected. You have this ability to just let go. Just try and be still here. Notice if you're forcing anything. And give yourself the opportunity to just back off. Sometimes we find ourselves pushing ourselves too much in life, thinking we're going to get a greater outcome. But sometimes by letting go, you get the best outcome. You can initiate action or movement from a more peaceful, stable base. Just allowing yourself to surrender into the pose, to invite everything it has to offer for you. Nice, gentle breathing. If the mind wanders, just allow it to come back. The sounds or the thoughts or the emotions get a little bit too close. Just allow them to drift off again. It's normal for the mind to wonder. It's hard to let go, it takes more courage. A few more breaths there. And then slowly starting to walk your hands in as you push the palms in. Sitting yourself nice and high now. And just help the hands to close the knees. Yeah, and then bring the feet out just a little wider. My mat is quite wide, but yours might be fine for the edges to the sides of your mat. Hands behind you, just draw up through the spine and let's release that a little bit by just windmilling the legs from one side to the other very slowly. So you've just opened up quite a lot there. Now you just want to get the blood and the element of water moving through the body. Okay, and then we're going to cross at the ankles and we're going to come through into sphinx, so laying on your belly. Okay, actually find tabletop before you start. Okay, 
and then bring your forearms down and then just creep yourself down onto your tummy. Okay. So you can interlace the hands here or you can push the palms down, but whichever option you choose, just make sure your elbows are underneath your shoulders, yeah? Okay. Now it's a little bit different from vinyasa, the strengthening one. So push your forearms into the mat, okay? Draw your heart and your sternum up. Allow your lower belly to drop towards the floor as you lengthen your lower back. Tucking your pubis bone into the floor a little and then just letting it go. Okay, so you get that lengthening feeling. Now relax your feet and your legs. Let your little toe roll to the edges of your mat, okay? And breathe in, lengthen through the spine, push the forearms into the mat and stay there. We're holding for three minutes, pushing the hands in if you want more. So just check in, if this is enough for you, you stay right there, okay? If it's not, you need to push the hands in and lift up to seal. But you're holding for three minutes, so choose wisely. Draw your navel through, allow your lower back just to settle down into the mat as you lengthen through the crown of your head. So try not lift the gaze up too much. It's sort of straight in front of you. If you feel like that cramps the back of your neck, just gaze in front of your hands, almost as if there's a tip of a triangle there. And soften. Keep your breath moving. So as you move and you work with the back, apart from it being your pillow of strength, it's your support structure and often sometimes physical or mental, emotional buildup can happen here. And so we'll bring in a loving kindness mantra. There's actually a whole meditation on this, but May you live with ease. May you be happy. May you be free from pain. May you live with ease. May you be happy. May you be free from pain. Stick with it. May you live with ease. May you be happy. May you be free from pain. Just keep this mantra going in your mind. Begin to invite someone you dearly love and send this mantra to them. May you live with ease. May you be happy. May you be free from pain. Repeat it twice more. Think about that person smiling. And then invite maybe family and friends. See their faces. May you live with ease. May you be happy. May you be free from pain. Invite colleagues. Invite faces you know. May you live with ease. May you be happy. May you be free from pain. Can you invite strangers into this beautiful circle? May you live with ease. May you be happy. May you be free from pain. Can you further invite animals, trees, and all living things. 
May you be happy. May you live with ease. May you be free from pain. And then slowly allow your arms to come out. Push your hands into the mat alongside your chest, elbows in. Toes are together. Just rock back into child with your knees closed for a moment. And we're just going to relax the back now. So we're doing a counter pose just to get that blood moving. So just rock gently from side to side. And then bring the hands back to the mat and lifting up onto all fours. So we're going to do a little bit of an odd pose here that we haven't practiced before called open wing. Um, Judy, I know your shoulders sometimes are a little bit um, tricky with you. So if you would like to do a shoulder opener, you can just bend the knees and bring the hands behind you, sort of lengthen through the back and then creep the arms behind you. And you'll feel this through the front tips of the shoulders, okay? So just stay steady there and breathe. And then when we swap sides for open wing, you just come out of it and just open up the arms and maybe you'd like to join in. So for those of you that are doing open wing, you're gonna lie on your belly, lie on your belly, okay? And then bring the arms out to the sides, okay? So you're gonna roll over to your right hand side now. Okay, so take the left fingertips to the floor and roll onto your right side. You might want to take like a cushion underneath your head or a foam. Okay, it makes it a little bit more comfortable. You see how you go, all right? And then what you're going to do is you're going to bend both your knees. So they're at hip height or just below, okay? And then you're gonna, you're gonna open up your left knee to the sky so that the sole of your foot pushes into the floor just behind your right foot. So you've got both your feet on the floor, yeah? And you're making sort of a diamond shape with your legs. All right, keep breathing. And you can take the left arm and you can wrap it around your back and tuck it underneath your right hip crease to exaggerate the stretch in the front of the chest. Otherwise, leave your fingertips on the floor. And we're holding here for two minutes. Keep your breath going. So lifting your left knee up to face the sky. Keep your breath going. Allow the shoulders and the chest just to open. Your right palm is pushing down. You, there's no tension in your neck or your jaw. You can keep a steady gaze and just feel the essence of the breath moving in. So Judy, you might just wanna do a shoulder opener this way. So we're opening the shoulders a bit. So just bring the hands behind your knees together. And then no pain, but just walk your hands behind you a little. So you're going to feel it on the fronts of the shoulders. And don't push yourself too hard. You just feel that beautiful opening. Feel the fact that you're getting all that blood and space moving around the joints. Okay. For those of you on the floor, you've got about... 30 seconds left. And then releasing the left arm if you've wrapped it around your back, plug the left fingers down, straighten out your right leg and then your left leg, and then just roll onto your belly again. So um, Judy, you come out of it and just move your arms open and closed and you can repeat again. So this is a double sided one here. Yeah? So we're gonna come to the other side now. So hopefully you can see what I'm doing here. Arms out, 
Palms down. You're going to roll on to the left side here. So just watch your shoulders, Judy. You might want to repeat what you've just done um, for a moment or two. Right fingertips down to the ground. You're going to feel the stretch through the chest and the left shoulder. Now bend your knees so that the knees are in line with the hips. And then lift your right knee up towards the sky as you push your right foot down behind the left foot. Okay. You can stay with your knees bent if it's too much. And then you can lift your right arm if you fancy, wrap it around your back and bring it underneath your left hip crease. And you're staying here for two minutes. So Judy, I'll cue you after one and then you can do the other side. Breathing in and settling down. Remember those three elements of yin. Find your edge. Get quiet and allow time. So Judy, if you'd like to swap sides now, you can. Keep your breath full. Be mindful of the movement. Just a few more moments here. And again, if your mind begins to wander, bring it back. And then slowly releasing your right arm, bringing the fingertips down to the floor, letting your knees meet again, straighten up the legs and then roll back onto your belly. Aligning yourself straight. We're going to come to wide-legged wide child now. So wide-legged child is for the hips and the um, inner thighs. So tap your toes together at the back. Make sure you've got a block or a prop if you want one. Okay, tap your toes. Now lift up onto all fours. Wiggle your knees in underneath your hips. Okay, now for wide-legged child, just make sure your knees are underneath your hips, yeah? Okay, take your knees a little wider than your hips. Now tap your toes together, okay? And then you're gonna lengthen through the tailbone and reach your seat bones towards your heels. So if this is a bit iffy on the knees, Roll something underneath the knees. If you find it's too much, you can always put a cushion between your sit bones and your heels. And you might want um, a cushion underneath your forehead. Okay, so extend the arms forward and out. And then just let the elbows soften down to the ground. Take a big breath in here. And just nestle your sit bones a little closer towards your heels. And just scan the physical body, holding this for three minutes. Keep your breath going. Keep it full. The monks high up in the Himalayas, they truly believed that a day without laughter or a day without love was a day without life. Make sure that you have fun while you are advancing along the path of your goals and purpose. Never forget the importance of living with unbridled exhilaration. Never neglect to see the exquisite beauty in all living things. Today and this very moment that you and I are sharing is a gift. 
remain spirited, joyful, and curious. The universe will take care of anything and everything else. This is one of nature's truest laws. I never regret what has happened in the past. There is a purpose for everything that has ever happened to you and everything that will happen to you. Every experience offers lessons. Never major in minor things and enjoy your life. Just one more moment here. Yeah. Get still, get quiet, no force, just letting go. Next inhale, you're going to come up onto all fours. And exhale, you're going to take a downward facing dog. Move your props away and lift the hips high up and back. Keep breathing here. Two more. Last one. And then gaze between your hands. You're going to step your right foot to the outer edge of your right hand. So your hands are to the inside of your right foot underneath your shoulders, yeah? Use a foam or a cushion underneath your back knee, yeah, because you're going to be here for a while. If you want to, otherwise double your max or if your knee's fine, then don't worry. Maybe a foam is fine as well. Okay. And then allow the knee to soften down. Drop the hips a little bit. So ideally, you want your knee and your ankle in a line. So don't have your foot too far forward, sort of bring it back so that your ankle and your knee are stacked, if you can, yeah? All right, beautiful, well done. Now, you can stay, we're coming into a version of dragon, okay? So you can stay here and just see how that feels and maybe you would like to soften down a little. Maybe you need sort of a bolster underneath your forearms. But if you'd like to come into dragon with me with a twist, if your hips allow you, just fan the right foot out sort of 45 degrees so that it's between one and two on a clock. Okay. You can roll to the outer edge. So for this one, it's opening the inner thigh. So now the knee can come out to the side if you'd like. Okay. You can bring the right hand so that the fingertips sort of face the inside of your right leg. That's it. Okay. Now, imagine you've got a little pip on the left side of your armpit and you're sort of tucking the shoulder back. Okay. So you don't want it to roll forward. You want it open. Flare up on your toes. Now drop your hips a little deeper. Inhale, lengthen through the body and exhale. You can gently bring your gaze over your back right shoulder. Feel the space, encompass the breath. Two minutes here. So for more sort of, if you never practiced yin before, anywhere between a 45 second and a three minute hold is ideal. But as you advance, you hold for five minutes and some people even hold for 20. So. Yeah, just inviting you into the sensation of this practice. Just allow to feel anything on that right inner thigh, that's it. Think about the space. Think about creating a nice long spine. It's hard to get still. It's a training of the mind. 
allowing yourself just to drop into the presence of the moment. And then bringing your gaze back down to the floor, right hand down. Just bring the right knee, track it back over the ankle. Very mindfully tuck the back toes now, lift the back knee, and then exhale, step the right foot back into the dog. Inhale, lift your hips up and back. Exhale there. When you're ready, stepping your left foot to the outer edge of your left hand this time. Again, use your props underneath your right knee if you need. Untuck your back toe. Okay, so just make sure that the knee is over the ankle, okay? And that the foot is not too further forward. That is actually a pose, a yin pose, but it's gecko. So I won't take you into gecko today. We'll invite you into this kind of practice a bit slowly. So take your left foot 45 degrees out. It's between 10 and 11 on the clock, yeah? Spike up your toes a little, roll to the outer edge of your left foot, let your left inner thigh open up so your knee moves to the side, yeah? It's okay for it to open up. Left hand just above your knee, fingers in. Drop your hips and drag them through a little. Make sure you've got that little pip that you squeeze into the outer edge of your right armpit. And then you can just gently bring the gaze over your shoulder. Be still. Be quiet. And allow the magic to happen. As long as you're not in any pain, see if there's any resistance. And then begin to drop in is it physical resistance or is it mental or emotional? And maybe it's a combination of both and that's totally fine. And just allow it to let go. Yin yoga opens up the meridians. This practice gets a lot of chi going. Get still, take child if you need. I'm sure you can agree that it's not easy to hold a pose. Be with it. Find your edge and no more. Last little moment. Be kind. Bringing your gaze down to the floor, bringing your left hand down. Tuck the back toes and then exhale into your dog. Lift the hips up and back. Exhale there. And we're gonna come through to swan. So bring your right knee behind your right wrist and your left heel or ankle sort of in line or above your left hip, okay? So you know your options here, we practice this one. You can use a foam underneath your sit, sit bone on the right. If you would like to, and that's too much on your hips, remember you are holding for a lot longer. So you can open up 90-90, okay? And then use your options here. Take your blocks, your bricks, okay? Yeah. Okay, so we're ready. So take a big breath in, wherever you are, first begin to lengthen. So never move into a pose with no space. Now, be mindful that if there's any sensation in your knee, you need to back off, yeah? So don't have any sort of niggly bits in the knee, otherwise, 90-90, or you can do reclined pigeon, which I'll cue you. So lengthen, and then exhale, fold. You can make a little cushion with your hands. You can use a foam. You can use a pillow. And then just drop in. 
If you're in the pigeon, you might want to tuck your back left toes and knee toe the left leg further back if you're not feeling anything. And just settle in. Two minutes here. Yeah. This is a good one to notice if there's anything going on. Remembering to connect with that inner joy and that beautiful, bright, burning light. See your own light burning brightly. And come back to that loving kindness meditation. May you live with ease. May you be happy. May you be free from pain. And now just say it to yourself. May I live with ease. May I be happy. May I be free from pain. May I be happy. May I live with ease. May I be free from pain. And then slowly, we're just going to walk the hands back up. Tuck the back toes now. Exhale into the dog. And we'll come to the other side. Left knee behind your left wrist. Choose your options again. Use your foam underneath your left sit bone if you like. Open up 1990 if that feels better for you. Beautiful. Okay, so wherever you've chosen to be, lengthen and then fold. Forearms first, check in there. And if that feels good, you can bring the hands one on top of each other. Remember, no tingly, funny sensations in the knee, okay? Otherwise, back or Tuck your back toes if you're in the full swan. And if you need more, you can knee toe the right leg further away towards the back of the mat. Otherwise, just stay where you are. See what you need today. May you be happy. May you live with ease. May you be free from pain. And then recite it to yourself. May I be happy. May I live with ease. May I be free from pain. Last minute here. Find your edge. Get quiet and allow time. Next inhale, walking it back and up, sitting nice and high. Tuck your back toes and exhale, find the dog. Inhale onto the all fours and then just shift your feet to one side. So we're going to come to caterpillar. Okay, so do take a rolled up blanket or a very thin cushion or a foam, depending on how open you are on the back line of your body. I'm going to use this today, okay? 
and then extend your legs forward. Now, you might need a block. I've got a book, sorry. Because <laughs> um, you're going to hold this. Okay. So lengthen up. Okay, so this is not like vinyasa. You're really going to let go now, yeah? So all we're going to do is we're going to roll forward through the spine. You can place your head on the block. If you don't need a block and you maybe need a cushion, that's also fine. You need to see what works for you, okay? So choose your options. And then just fold forward. Let your back round for this one. So don't hold on to your legs or anything. Let the hands flop to the sides. Let the palms face up so you can receive. And now your legs can actually open up. So if your inner thighs roll to the sides and your little toe rolls down, that's totally fine for caterpillar. And I'll breathe. Keep your breath anchored. Remember, there's no push or pull here. It's letting go. It's letting your muscle get long and just have a break from all that high intensity work, whether it's a running or your job or stress or whatever it is, you just got to invite it to let go. This is quite an easy one to find resistance moving in. So remember, just find your edge. Get quiet and allow time. Next inhale, you're gently going to walk up with your hands. Okay, remove your props if you've had any. Bend your knees, push your feet into the floor, just remove your foam or your cushion. And then we're just going to lie down on our back and we're going to take a little twist to each side. So bring the arms out like airplane wings. And then eagle bind your legs, so right leg over left, but don't hook the right foot behind the left ankle. So just keep it open. Take a big breath in, and then exhale, lower your legs over to the floor on the left as you look over your right arm. If it's too much with your right arm extended, you can bring your right hand to your hip. Yeah. Okay, so your right leg is on top of your left, and you're moving your legs to the left-hand side. That's it, yeah. And now soften. Let go. And be still. Just feeling all that beautiful blood moving into the lower back in and around the hip. In and around the shoulders. And then we'll come back to center. 
and then we'll go to the other side, crossing the left leg over the right this time and lowering the legs over towards the left hand side. Look over the left shoulder or bring the left hand to the hip if it's too much. Just feel that beautiful, gentle opening through the chest, through the side waist, through the lower back. Just a few more moments there. And then coming back to center and unraveling the legs. We're going to come to Shavasana now. If there's anything that you feel your body organically needs right now, maybe it's hugging the knees into the chest for a moment and just gently rocking. Do that. Okay. And then get yourself really warm and steady for Shavasana. You might want something underneath your knees. You might want something underneath your head. If you've got an eye bag, use it. Make sure you've got some socks on so you don't catch a chill. Yeah, okay. Small movements, powerful practice. Okay, so we're going to be a few minutes here. So just make yourself very comfortable. And if there's anything you can do to make yourself even more comfortable, just do it now. Just letting the back of your skull fall into the mat. No tension in your neck. Your shoulders and your arms, the backs of your hands, just sink into the earth. Your spine is free from any pressure or strain. It's spacious and you allow it to rest. Your hips are gentle with no load <clears throat> and roll open to the sides as your feet turn out. The sit bones and the legs and the feet are heavy. Your whole being is resting. You might attune yourself to the pulse moving through the body. Feeling the heartbeat and noticing the rise and fall of your breath. Your mind drifts to the depths of the ocean. to the plants and the sea life. And they are breathing too. You are breathing together. And as you come closer to the shorelines, you notice animals 
plants. And you are breathing together. You meet people, you see people, you know about people, and you are all breathing together. The world is breathing. And as you look up and out in your mind's eye, the universe is breathing. All things connected. All things mystical, magical, and a gift. Did you feel this connection? Can you begin to just find a softness and an ease? An excitement and a joyfulness dancing in your heart. As you begin to see the universe breathing, people, plants, animals, the sea, ocean life breathing, you are breathing. No control, it happens. Feel comforted by the ebb and flow of your breath. Can you begin to Notice how maybe the breath rises and falls in you again. The pulsation through the body. The clarity of your mind. Can you invite your true nature to move with you and through you? As you come into Christmas, connect that inner smile from the inside and let it radiate through your whole being through your face, through every cell in your body. Allow yourself the privilege of enjoying time with yourself and others, breathing together, being together.
feeling the physical body on the mat. Feel the weight of the bones. Draw your awareness back into the sounds around you. Draw your awareness back into your breath. Allow that breath to travel a little deeper down into the belly, becoming a little fuller. As if it's a wave of energy and on the exhale, you're just pumping this light free life into your whole body, your bones, your muscles, your skin, your blood. Take a few moments here to breathe in and just get the breath moving a little deeper. And rubbing your fingers now and wiggling your toes. Rubbing your hands together in front of your heart space. Creating that warmth. Then just putting them over your eyes. And then over your ears. And then just give yourself a nice big long stretch, reaching your arms up overhead. And then remove your props if you've got any under your head or your knees, very mindfully, slowly and gently with no rush at all. And come back to hugging your knees into your chest, just cradling yourself there for a moment. Just rolling from side to side. And then when you're ready, roll over onto your right. Support your head in the crook of your right arm. Leave your left arm trailing behind you. And as you edge through Christmas, you navigate forward through this new year. No matter how steep it may seem. Carry a sense of ease and love with you. Filling up through that heart space again. And remember we breathe together. We live together. No one is ever alone. As you bring your left hand in front of your chest, just push it in. To come up to seated. Keep your eyes closed for a moment as you lengthen through the crown and down through the tail. You can bring your left palm up and your right hand down as a gesture to receive and also to center yourself. And then opening up the eyes, bringing the hands to the heart center. And then to the third eye. You can take a bow if you like. Namaste. Just going to ask you to sit tight there and not unmute yourself until I stop recording it for other people who weren't here today. Um, otherwise, they might see you. 